On Friday on this broadcast, um, I made some pretty strong statements about um, information that we would release. Well, it is now time to release it. The government has not come clean, nor has um, really any of the mainstream media. Some of this information has now come out over the weekend. Some of it came out in dribs and drabs uh, last week. And immediately the government tried to discredit it. Um, But we have sources, and I will tell you that while we are not the source of um, much of what came out... um, uh, you know the different uh, the different people. These sources, some of which we are talking to, are talking to others. We are not an organization that cares about exclusives. I don't care about being first. I care about being accurate. I also held this information um, as long as we could um, from you because I don't. I think it would have been much better if CNN, ABC, and NBC would have broken this, and I also think it would have been much better if the federal government would have come out. We received some of this information beginning on Tuesday of last week and began to do our own homework and investigation. By Wednesday afternoon, we knew it to be true. We have the um, sources, and we have documents in hand. Um, uh, So we know we're right. Um, I warn you that... While some of this now you have heard, others, there are, I think, five different points in here that is new and exclusive. Um, I warn you that uh, do not go to just anybody for additional. Just because these things we can verify because we have the documents in hand does not mean that we go any further than this. Um, We have some other things that we are going to lock down Uh, in the coming days we have some more tomorrow and the next day and probably the next day and into next week as we verify and also giving people in the government and the media the opportunity to tell the truth the reason why this is important to me is this information will only divide us even more I told you uh, on Friday that I thought I I had reached the bottom of my trust level with the government and with the media. Oh, no. No. No, I haven't. And um, now the government is out and out lying to you. They are engaging in uh, a disinformation campaign to discredit and destroy. And some of our sources are under threat of uh, 20-year prison terms for speaking to members of the media. I can just tell you that there are brave Americans that are at the highest levels that are begging you to listen and to take action and call your congressmen and call your media centers and say, why aren't you doing something about this? While the media continues to look at what the causes were of these two guys, there are, at this hour, three, three people involved in the bombings in uh, Boston. The first one is is the one we're going to address. You know the other two, they were caught on Friday. But the first one was caught on Monday. And we don't know at this point, I can speculate, but I won't at this hour, I can speculate, and I bet you can draw your own conclusions as well, as how he was involved. But we do know that he was involved. You can ask yourself this question, how many times does lightning have to strike in the first place for this guy to be at the scene of the crime and in the hospital and not involved? On Monday, following the bombings, A Saudi national was taken into custody in the hospital, having been injured in the blast. This is according to two FBI sources to the blaze. They use the term in custody. That evening, his Revere apartment was searched and property was taken out, according to an NCTC source. NT, NCTC is the National Counterterrorism Command Center. So I don't. Know. It is. This is. These are the people that 
Make sure everybody's talking to each other. This is the group that makes sure that everything is coordinated. It is the main center. In exclusive timeline details now, the next day, Tuesday, the uh, NCTC issued an event file. An event file is very important. An event file means we have a terrorist. An event file uh, calling for his deportation using Section 2123B. If you listen to me on Friday, the reason why I said three, I said he's a very bad, bad, bad man, was to send a message to those in the Department of Homeland Security and in the administration. We knew he was a 3B um, status. 3B is about as bad as they come. This is somebody, if you get a 2123B tag, it means that you have uh, demonstrated yourself to be a proven terrorist and engaged in proven terrorist activity it was created by the ntc field watch commander at 4 p.m and he was tagged as a 3b these documents are time stamped who actually tagged him as a 3b we are not sure we know the field commander or the uh, field watch commander is the one who entered it who which government agency said he's 3b we don't know but we do know this it is almost impossible to charge someone with this it is very very difficult you need solid evidence because this isn't something that one group says hey 2123b all of the departments have to agree that that evidence is strong enough to to tag someone 2123b it has to be almost certain proof and evidence. If any agency that is part of the NCTC disagrees with the charge, it cannot be applied. It's very important that you understand this is not something that is riddled with mistakes. If you had a 2123B, if one person objects and says that's not right, you are not allowed to tag them with that. It's a huge burden of proof. It is the equivalent in civil society of charging someone with premeditated murder and seeking the death penalty. So nobody called up and said, hey, 2123B, put it on, and we'll take it off later. Now, Tuesday, this happened on Tuesday. As soon as that happened... Tuesday morning, Secretary of State John Kerry meets with the Saudi Foreign Minister, Saad. The meeting is ab- abrupt and it is closed to the media. Tuesday, after that meeting, the FBI starts to backtrack from the suspect, saying he's no longer a suspect, he's a person of interest. Then he's no longer a person of interest, he's a witness. Then he's a victim, and then he's a nobody. Wednesday afternoon, the president has a chance encounter with the Saudi foreign minister Saud again and the Saudi ambassador Adel al-Jabir. They say this was about new developments in Syria. Do not believe it. Exclusive now from the blaze, updated information. Wednesday at 5.35 p.m., the file, the 2123B, is altered. This is unheard of. This is impossible in the timeline due to the severity of the charge. If, if these things did happen, which they don't, if this did happen, you don't one day put a 2123B charge against somebody with deportation and then the very next day take it off it would require too much to do it the order was that the deport or uh, the uh, deport order was rescinded the and this is critical that you understand there were only two people that could do this the director of the uh, nctc could order the change after talking to each department after going to the FBI and the ATF and everybody else and saying, hey, you know that evidence we had, here's evidence against it, etc., etc., 
Only the department could do that by running everybody through and making sure that everybody signs off. Impossible to do in such a short period of time. Or somebody at the very highest levels of the State Department could do it. We don't have any evidence to tell you which one did it. Thursday, Janet Napolitano testifies before the House Homeland Security Committee that no Saudi national has been or was being deported. This goes directly against the order that we have in hand. Exclusive information now from The Blaze. Congressman Duncan is in possession of the original event file along with members of the House Homeland Security Committee Congressman King, McCall, and Miller, they have sent a formal letter of request, which we have a copy of and and is now posted at The Blaze, for a classified briefing on the Saudi national and the deportation order. The Department of Homeland Security needs to answer Congress. Another exclusive now from The Blaze that was just reported on um, uh, Fox Radio. Let me read it from Fox Radio. The Saudi national who was initially detained and then ruled out as a suspect in the Boston Marathon terrorist attack had been flagged on a terror watch list. Let me report. Had been flagged on a terror watch list and was granted a student visa without being properly vetted. A source close to the investigation revealed that Abdul Rahman Ali Al-Harbi had been deemed inadmissible under a section of the Immigration and Nationality Act which declares ineligible for a visa any alien who is engaged in or is likely to engage after entry in terrorist activity. At least two additional sources have confirmed that Ali al-Harbi is sent to be, uh, set to be deported as early as this week, contrary to statements made by Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano. Thursday of last week now, going back to the Blaze um, report today, Thursday, DHS and ICE told the media that there are two Saudi nationals, and it's the other one, not the one hospitalized for injuries suffered in the bombing. That's the one that's in custody and being deported. We would respectfully ask for any kind of evidence of that. Who is this second Saudi? There were no names, no pictures presented. The fact is, an event file was created for one Abdul Rahman Ali Al-Harbi, indicating that he was deported for terrorism activity, activity, clearly stated on the event file for the Boston bombing. If there is a file that has been created with another Abdul Rahman Ali Al Harbi in mind, don't you think we should know about it? Also, exclusive from the blaze, this Saudi had a student visa. This Saudi's student visa specifically allows him to go to school in Finley, Ohio. He has been in this country now for six months. We cannot find any evidence that he is in Finley, Ohio. He has an apartment in Boston, Mass. If this is a case of mistaken identity, then who is the person named in the file with the same name, with the 3B charge? If DHS was working with a person as a source to out the bombers, then why is there a 3B charge? Exclusive. Why, why wasn't the Congressional Committee on Homeland Security notified? Why are they being cut out of all information This is protocol. We're working on the family connections. And there is more to come. Sources tell us 
This will most likely now be kicked from DHS to the DOJ and labeled an ongoing investigation that just cannot no longer be discussed. This will be the reason Napolitano will not answer the Homeland Security Committee's request for a briefing. Like Benghazi, they have a heavy disinformation campaign floating a variety of scenarios to confuse the media, but that apparently doesn't take much. To prevent the story from being pursued, mistaken identity, wrong Saudi in custody, they are also working very hard to discredit those on the scent. I will give you more information on this in just a few minutes. But I want you to know, I need you to call your congressman right now. There are those congressmen that are aware of this, have seen the documentation. They're in the Homeland Security um, Committee. They know. They have seen it. They need your support. They need your help. If the American people do not stand up, and they do not demand justice to be done, and they do not demand information on where this Saudi is right now, our sources tell us there's one of two things. He's either on a plane tomorrow or he is already gone. We want to know where he is. We demand answers from the Justice Department and from this administration. You call your congressman right now and you ask them, are you aware of this, this information? If not, talk to the Homeland Security Committee. And if you are not on top of this and making this your first priority today, I want to know why. Call them now i will give you more information and why this is happening and also the media and how they responded behind the scenes coming up in a few minutes